In fact, he's only behind Jalen Hurts, you know, in quarterback play on third down efficiency. So this guy has been clutch for Minnesota. He's a key reason why they are 3-0. and And the thing they want to do today is get the rushing game going to take a little pressure off of him. Yeah, they got a bunch of running backs that are healthy today. Rodney Smith, who's in the backfield right now, is one of them. And Morgan to pass on first down. Good pocket over the middle. It is caught by Rashad Bateman. And he's taken down at the 43-yard line. Watch for number six and watch for number 13. Yeah, but it starts up front, and you think about number 78. Quint told you about him. He's over here on the right side. Now watch him in pass protection. Pretty good use of his hands. Well, maybe a little bit. Hope, but he runs him right out of there. That's 400 pounds you're moving, so your feet really have to get moving. Bateman, a 17-yard pickup on first down. He goes over 1,000 yards for his brief career, just a sophomore from Georgia. First down play, RPO, pressure on the slant, Bateman, flag out at the 40-yard line. Bateman will be taken down at the Purdue 30, but there's a flag back at the 50, Jalen Graham with the tackle. That is a good call by you, partner, on the run-pass option. John O'Neill is our referee here this afternoon. That's a 25-yard gain pending the yellow marker. People are hearing so much about the RPO these days. They should be quite familiar with it, but it's just the quarterback. It is a receiver downfield. Offense number 64. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Quarterback decides after the snap whether to hand off or throw. Now remember, there is a three-yard limit for the offensive lineman. You cannot go beyond three yards. So if you hold that ball too long, that lineman might get three yards or more downfield, hence the penalty. And so for folks who've watched RPO, the RPO run pass option, obviously there's that mesh point, and it all is in concert together. So a five-yard penalty will mark it first and 15. Rodney Smith in the backfield, and now Tanner Morgan will look to the side. Late in the clock now with six seconds to go. Has his guy set. Smith on the run, trying to find the edge. He'll pick up three, and it'll be second down and 12 for Rodney Smith, a fifth-year senior from Georgia. Yeah, you know, we were talking about Morgan and his being so clutch. You know, P.J. Fleck has a lot of trust in him. I mean, he's a guy that he recruited when he was in Western Michigan, and he followed him over here. So there's a long history with them. Well, it's a great story, right, because he... Uh... He, as in Tanner Morgan, in high school, took over a 1-11 and 11 team, turned him into a 13-1, and one, just like that man at Western Michigan, P.J. Fleck, who also had a 1-11 and 11 team and turned them around before coming to Minnesota. Second and 12. Pass play. Bateman has it. It's a plus territory out at the 42-yard line. That's a first down. This is the third year for P.J. Fleck after all his success at Western Michigan. And I really think he's ahead of schedule here. People forget when he came in his first year, he had four offensive linemen. They had 26 players leave the team. They had off-field issues going on, and he had to clean all that up. And here he has his team at 3-0, and you know, in year three. You know, their win over Purdue last year, you could look at it as maybe a turning point now in his third year as Morgan looks to throw open tight end. Paulson's got it inside the 20. Jake Paulson, first down in the red zone. Graham got the tackle. Yeah, simple tight end release up the seam, and he doesn't get held or bumped or anything. There he is, right behind the linebackers. In that area between the linebackers and in front of the safeties. And what a nicely thrown ball by Morgan. You just see his confidence growing each week. It's a 24 yard gain. They mark it at the 18 yard line. Just to finish my thought rod on PJ Fleck, they beat Purdue 41 to 10 last year up in Minneapolis. And since then, they've won five in a row. The big win over Wisconsin yep. to grab Paul Bunyan's axe. And then their bowl victory as well in the 3 0 start this year. RPO give. Rodney Smith spinning to the 11-yard line. Navon Mosley a tackle after the gain of seven. Yeah, just inside cue, inside running cue. Yeah, the inside zone play. That's their bread and butter. And if they get that going, look out. Because this year, it just hasn't looked the same as it did a year ago, late in the season, the last four or five games, as you guys just referenced, where this big offensive line started crashing down, winning the line of scrimmage, cutback lanes opened up. Well, if you're Minnesota, you just run right at him right now, don't you? 
Uh, Kirk Scirocco, the offensive coordinator, mentioned he wants, to see, he wants to see a little dent on that offensive line. And Smith bumps off the line, gets out to the edge, and is forced out at about the six-yard line. This is a defense that is young and beat up. They're missing a couple of key players. You know, Lorenzo Neal is out for them. Marcus Bailey's also out. So what Nick Holt, the D coordinator, has done this week, he's challenged these guys. You know, just, just kind of challenging their manhood, saying, look, you have got to be more physical. This is a big offensive line. They're not going to feel sorry for you. They're coming at you. you got to be more physical and stand up to it. Mohamed Ibrahim, who had dealt with a leg injury last week, did not play. So we saw Rodney Smith back from injury. Now Ibrahim in the backfield. And this is Seth Green. He's the Wildcat quarterback. Green's going to attack up the middle and gets across the five-yard line to the four for a gain of two. Part of the answer for Nick Holt, the D coordinator, is to move his defensive front. Now you can't sit there and let these guys that outweigh you from 75 to 150 pounds just lean on you. So he's going to take his, take his spots and, and move those guys and try to get some penetration. Well, the uh, brigade of running backs coming back. Number four in white is in the backfield, Shannon Brooks. Great story. Tore a left ACL, came back last year, and in the first game, tore his right ACL. And he is on the field right now for the first time since last October. It is a toss to Tyler Johnson and around, contacted at the four and knocked down by Dedrick Mackey. Nice play on the misdirection. What a great open field play by Mackey. I'm really surprised that they went to the edge, Minnesota, that time. You know, Mackey, very good tackle. If you're, if you're going to go and you've got this advantage here, you got 750 pounds between your right guard and your right tackle. Crowd gets on its feet, Ron. Big yeah. defensive play here on third and goal. Yeah. If loud, I, yeah. loud in this end zone. They've shown the tendency to run right, but don't be surprised if the quarterback keeps it. I'd say on that right side, Q, that's a lot of beef over there. That's the wide side of the field. The play clock is down to five. And racing down the sideline, P.J. Fleck on a big third and goal is going to use a timeout. Timeout, Purdue trying to defend the shadow of the goal line. Scoreless just underway at Purdue, Minnesota. First series of the game, ninth play of the drive coming up. And a big third and goal play, P.J. Fleck talking it over using an early timeout. Yeah, and I would imagine that they're probably even thinking that this is really two down territory. They go Wildcat here. So Seth Green's second time will be the Wildcat quarterback. Redshirt Jr. Eight rushing touchdowns a year ago. He's got two so far this season, and he's got Rodney Smith on his right hip. Third and goal, direct snap to Smith, flag down, Smith extending, and he's across the line. Touchdown is the signal, and we'll wait on the penalty marker. Offside, defense number 27. That penalty is declined, result of the play is a touchdown. So it'll be a three-yard touchdown on the direct snap to Rodney Smith. Oh, right there. Can't get in the neutral zone. And instead of going on the right side, they come back to the left side with the extra tight end over there. Just a little bit of power there. Rodney Smith with his second rushing touchdown of the season. Michael Lance, freshman kicker, on for the extra point. Officially a two-yard touchdown. Point after is inside the left, upright and good. A 75-yard drive. P.J. Fleck already excitable. Tanner Morgan leading an opening touchdown drive here at Purdue. ESPN College Football brought to you by Hyundai. And Temptations Cat Treats. All it takes is a shake. The cradle of quarterbacks. They got astronauts here. They got quarterbacks here. We saw the young Bob Greasy. Drew Brees also. The outstanding work he did here at Purdue. And that kind of leads nicely into Elijah Sindelar, who is set kind of Drew Brees-ish like numbers in his first two games well, of the season. Yeah, I mean, that was the start he had his first couple of games. You see it there. 400 plus yards in back-to-back -back games. First one to do it since Mr. Drew Brees. And it'll be really interesting to watch and see how long it takes him 
to get back into that flow. You know, timing and how he handles a hit. All that kind of good stuff. Coming back from concussion is not easy. And we'll see how this Purdue team looks off the bye. Minnesota looked spectacular on a 75-yard drive. Rondell Moore will let this one hit about a yard deep in the end zone, dead for a touchback, and we will get a look at the Purdue offense starting at the 25-yard line. You saw those numbers from Sindelar. Breeze-like running, setting the tone, running. That's a big issue here. We talked about Minnesota's struggle running. Purdue has had a similar fate. Well, make no mistake about it, though. Sindelar's number one goal is to get the ball to Rondell Moore. They've got to get him involved early and often. He only had five targets last, last game against TCU, and that was not, not good enough. So we'll go with a receiver on each side, and King Doru, the freshman, getting a start. Play action on first down, looking sideline to the left, turning, and trying to make the catch on the sideline. Incomplete Ahmad Anderson, a redshirt freshman from New York City. Well, Sindelar came out looking for more. And Moore wasn't open, so he quickly came off of him and went the other way. But his eyes will almost always, first look, be towards number four, at least early in the game, to try to get him going. I think uh, Moore might be off the field here as I take a quick scan of it on this three-receiver set. He is off the field. David Bell is in. And so is Jackson Anthrop, who's in that slot toward the bottom of your screen. It's a run for Doru. Got a good early look, but then Antoine Winfield, the safety, with a lick to knock him down at the 29. Oh, the nosy safety sneaking around the box. Number 11 should be 10, 15 yards deep. He's right at the line of scrimmage. They have loaded the box to really take away things. Moore's not on the field. They figured run. He sneaks down, and there is Moore again. Brought him in now in the slot right. This will be third down and six as Elijah Sindelar looks over to the Purdue bench. There, that's the key guy. How do they play him? They're going to match up with Chris Williamson. There's a pass on the slant, drop, trying to get to the tight end, Bryson Hopkins, and it'll be fourth down and the punting unit coming on for Purdue. Yeah, Moore attracts a lot of attention, and we'll, we'll get into that as this game goes along. Teams have really sort of focused or rolled their coverage to him at times with three sets of eyes on him to make sure that he is not the primary guy who gets the ball. So a disappointing start for Purdue on its first series as Brooks Cormier, freshman punter, will come in. Demetrius Douglas will wait as Brian Brom and Elijah Sindelar have a, a healthy conversation on the sideline. No pressure for Cormier, but this is a nice punt. Spirals. Now let it bounce. It checks up at the 15 and takes a great Purdue bounce. And they're going to knock that one down at the two. What a nice job by Brooks Cormier. Let's take a look at that first drive for Minnesota. And that was a lot of Morgan. A lot of Tanner Morgan through the air, even with that big offensive line. He was spot on. Finds his man Bateman early on. Comes back, gets him on the outside, and then his big tight end right down the, the seam there in Paulson. He had a very efficient opening drive. Four for four, as you see, a 75-yard drive. The Cormier punt goes for 69 yards. So he flipped the field on his own, and the Gophers will start. It's like the nose of the football right about the two-yard line. Rodney Smith in the backfield. Tanner Morgan standing a few steps into the end zone. On first down. Good protection. Sideline throw caught by Ottman Bell, but nowhere to go as he's ushered out of bounds by Corey Trice. Backup cornerback, a gain of five. A lot of confidence by Minnesota in their pass protection right now. They, they've, they've struggled this year with that, but they come out firing, and these guys have done a good job of keeping Purdue at bay. Throwing on first down seems like it's a trend, and it kind of protects your offensive line. No, Rod? You know, Q, last year they had success on first down against Purdue, and that was sort of the key to their win. Shannon Brooks is in looking for his uh, first run since last October, second down and five. Send a man in motion, give to Brooks. Trying to muscle his way to the 10-yard line. Got to be good feeling for him to get back onto the field after two Tornacios. Then Holt with the stop for Purdue, a gain of three. Here's a big third down. If you can stop them here, Purdue, you can get the ball back in great field position. And this is where Minnesota likes to go really slow. They'll set up 
they'll look over. You know, their mentality offensively is get into the perfect play. Third and two. Minnesota's proven to be very pesky good third down team. Brooks stacked up. Holt's got him. They're not going to get it. Down at the nine, a loss of one. Cornell Jones first to touch him. Yeah, Cornell Jones came firing in right away, and they needed that. They've been missing that kind of play. You'll watch him in the middle of your screen. Watch 46. He just comes right off that double team. Gets a little bit of help from his buddy Holt, but it was Jones who read that double team immediately and fired into the hole to get that stop. Ben Holt's dad, Nick, is the defensive coordinator. He told us yesterday, Cornell Jones has to step up. He named a couple of players. Jones was one of them, and he got a big play there. Hey, when a coach challenges you, you hear him. There's a punt that's going to be short and a fair catch in great territory. Looks like inside the 40-yard line, they're going to mark it at about the 39, just a 32-yard punt. Well, tonight, number five, Ohio State takes on Nebraska from Lincoln, 730 Eastern on ABC, also on the ESPN app. Buckeyes have won their last four against the Cornhuskers. Great to see everybody enthused in Lincoln uh, with college game day there earlier this morning. And well, Justin Fields has been pretty good, hasn't he? Yeah. But uh, Gabrielle Union was there with her husband, Dwayne Wade, and That's she was right. not feeling Ohio State. No. She was not about Justin Fields. She was all about <laughs> Martinez and what her Cornhuskers can do tonight. Coach put on the, uh, the Buckeye hat, and only she liked it very much. First play is a slant to David Bell, still on his feet inside the 25-yard line. What a change from the Cormier punt, the defensive stop, and a quick hit there on the slant. Yeah, and good protection. So the freshman receiver, Bell, who's had a bad shoulder, you know, I was able to make that route, run that dig, and get that catch. Well, they're going up tempo here after the 17-yard gain. Pulling it back, Sindelar finds a Rondale Moore. Moore trying to make a move and gets to the 16-yard line before Jordan Howden takes him down another seven game. Can you imagine how difficult it must have been then to play tag against him as a kid? <laughs> Frustrating. Yeah. There's just no way you get a hand on him. Well, you got to look at Jeff Brom. He had a... A pretty fiery conversation with Elijah Sindelar after that first drive went nowhere. And Sindelar on the second drive has him second down and three. Pulls it back, fires complete. Out to the 10 yard line to the five and gang tackle Jackson Anthrop. That'll move the chains first and goal Boilers. Uh, the quick passing game allows them to get the ball out quick. They've had trouble protecting the quarterback. Brom likes to use the screen game an awful lot. Yeah, the good news, guys, is that he also hasn't taken a hit yet, Elijah Sindelar. They've kept it pretty clean for him. And now they'll set up with a chance looking to tie. Five and a half minutes to go here in the first. First and goal after the 11-yard gain. Three in the backfield. The Doru hit. Forward progress up to the four-yard line for one. I would imagine that you'll get more back on the field for this second down play. Gives you more options down here. Now, the, the question is, where, where do they line him up down here? Even as a decoy, he can take a couple defenders away from him. And it looks like he's going to go in a slot position somewhere up here. Now, if he's singled up, well, he's one-on-one -on -one out there. That's, you, can't, you can't ignore that, right? But DeAndre Thomas is going to guard him this time. They're looking for more on the slant. Broken up, and the flag comes in. Yeah. Thomas was the defender. Winfield the safety coming over. Everyone sitting in the top row around here looked at him. They said, hey, there's single coverage on that guy. Don't we want to throw the ball to him? Ball was deflected, though, gentlemen. There is no foul for pass interference. The ball was tipped. Third down. Great call, Q. Let's take a look at that deflection. Yep, Renner tipped at the line of scrimmage. It. So Sam Renner tipped it, no flag. That's a really good route by Moore to get inside. He never gave the defensive back a chance to get his hands on him and keep him from getting inside. So now third and goal for Purdue. Quarterback draw. Sindelar throws, another slant, knocked away. Nice defense by Coney Durr that time on the pass intended for David Bell. Both teams' defenses playing well inside the five. 
Well, remember we talked about you know timing. Now, good defense by Minnesota, but these are very precise passes in a short area that have to be thrown by Sindar. And remember, you know he's coming off the concussion. This is his first live game action in a couple of weeks. It'll get better, but this is precise stuff down here. Not surprised that it was a little difficult. A nice uh, couple of passes early to get him in position. This is a 21 yard field goal attempt. It is up and through for J.D. Dellinger. Purdue gets three points off it. Four and a half minutes to go. First quarter. Minnesota leads. This season, for every field goal, an extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Field goal by Purdue, encouraging after a nice punt by Brooks Cormier. Backed up Minnesota. And Purdue was able to end up with three points. I'm sure they're disappointed, but got on the board with three. Well, you like to come away with touchdowns about 70% of the time when you're in the red zone. So each time you miss really hurts. J.D. Dellinger will kick it off here. And Rodney Smith will watch that out the back of the end zone as we check in the studio with Kevin Connors. All right, Kev, thanks a lot. And a look at the uh, college football rankings brought to you by Capital One. I want to talk about one thing down there. Clemson, I think that that's right. That belongs number one. Notre Dame should be higher than number 10. I think the committee would have them higher than number 10. That was an, I mean, an impressive loss, but played well against Georgia last week. Look, when you go out and challenge yourself like that and play a game like that, you should be rewarded. Late. Run, Rodney Smith twisting and turning and gets across to the 30 yard line. And since we're talking about rankings, let me get it off my chest. <laughs> so Auburn has played as difficult a schedule as anyone and handled it. They're undefeated. Notre Dame going to Georgia and playing that tough game. I think those are two teams that really ought to be moved up in the rankings. Well, uh, it'll be Notre Dame and Virginia tonight. Uh, you know, rankings are interesting, especially in September. Now, don't get me wrong. I still think at the end of the day, Alabama and Clemson will be there. <laughs> I'm just talking about right now. That's right. <laughs> Michigan getting back on track, if you will. Shut out win over Rutgers today after a tough loss. A week ago, and this time it's a pass on the slant. Caught off and Bell. He's got some room at the 40-yard line. He's got a blocker as well from Johnson. Off and Bell takes it to the house. 70 yards. Well, we've seen this an awful lot. This is just that RPO. You see the linebacker come inside, creates that huge area, and Minnesota loves the slant plays, and Ottman Bell gets right into that area. Here it is. Linebackers inside, Nickelback inside, and then the slant. That was way too easy for Minnesota. Chris Ottman Bell, who is... I don't want to say he's one of the forgotten really good receivers on a team stacked with good receivers. Tyler Johnson, Rashad Bateman, his second touchdown catch of the year is Michael Lance. Extra point is good. That's impressive for Chris Altman Bell, whose only other touchdown reception was that tying touchdown catch where he just got his foot in the back of the end zone late fourth quarter at Fresno State to force overtime a game. They would uh, go on to win a career long reception for Chris Ottman Bell of 70 yards. And you could see the defensive coordinator Nick Holt. He is not a happy man on the sideline. And here's the reason why. Yeah, just, just make sure you watch all the movement you have here and then the mesh point, and you get that right behind there, that slant right behind it, and that makes it really easy. So now you jump up for the run. You go out and cover that guy outside. You got nothing inside there, Q. It's an easy slant pick. Uh, yeah. Touchdown. Their wide receiver coach, Matt Simon, told me pregame, they designed their routes to capitalize on the run fit assignments of linebackers and the secondary guys. Yeah. And he had the safety moving toward help, and he was going in the wrong direction. 
as Altman Bell was on the slant the other way. Grant Ryersee. And this will be taken out by Rondell Moore. Moore bouncing off the pack outside the 25 and out of bounds just shy of the 30 yard line. Let's head back to the studio. Here's Kevin Connors. All right, Kev, we'll keep an eye on that one. Of course, we talk about great receivers. Alabama has that. Oh, yeah, they're loaded. Ruggs is one of them. Yeah. So Purdue will take over at their 29-yard line after the 20-yard return from Rondell Moore. Jackson Anthrop, who was a running back in high school, is a wide receiver here in the backfield. They hit Rondell Moore on a pass out to the 40-yard line for an 11-yard gain. Well, I, I think one thing you're going to do if you're Purdue, if you get single coverage on Moore, you're going to take this all day. You're going to force them to change up what they're doing. And even if they're just playing off a soft zone and playing off of him, you still take advantage of that. Second reception for Moore. We told you off the top, only had three last week or two weeks ago in their loss against TCU. Another pass play. Pressure coming and down he goes inside the 30 yard line. Tavon Devers. And Elijah Sindelar is down. Remember, we told you just coming off the Official concussion two off weeks ago. For an injured player. Oh, and Rondell Moore is down as well. Wow, a devastating play right there. Best quarterback and receiver both down on the same play. Remember, Sindelar is coming off of a concussion. He's been out two weeks, but during that two week span, he was under the care of the medical staff, was cleared to play, but had not had any contact. Now, here is down the field. You're getting double coverage on uh, Moore, and you see he had that awkward step, and he grabbed his knee after he got pushed. Sindelar Dis down, checking cue yeah. that left shoulder. Absolute disbelief on this Purdue sideline. Yeah. Well, Q, it's the one thing that we were talking about and wondering about with, with Sindelar, simply you know, no contact and not much full speed action. Ooh, wow. What would it be like when he first got back out here? Moore just took a step and went his down. His leg buckled and went down and the crowd oh just gasped. Yeah, here's that look at it. This what? is horrible. It's his left leg. Watch that left oh. leg. Here's a look at Sindelar. Head hit the ground, immediately went toward the left shoulder as well. And Moore can't put any. We're seeing Sindelar, but there's more now. Wow. I, I, you talk about a catastrophic play. Yep. Sindelar has been through so much in his career. Two knee surgeries, arthritis in his knee, then the concussion, and now this. And Moore, who's only a sophomore, but, I mean, let's face facts, he's one of the most electric players in the nation, NFL future. You hate to see this. He's struggling to put any weight on that left leg. Just a tiny bit now as he's being helped off. Right. And with Sindelar, we don't know from what we've seen whether that is a shoulder issue or if it is something to do with his head. We can't tell. And leading into the game, we were all concerned or worried about whether he was ready to come back. Jeff Brown said he left it completely up to the medical staff, and they probably felt like they, they gave him more time to come back. So and there's... Bring in Jack Plummer, Plummer, who played last week. And Plummer will hand it off to Anthrop, who gets crunched across the 35-yard line by Thomas Barber. The energy is gone from this place right now. Yeah, how are you going to react? Okay, you're one and two, not playing well. Your best two players just carted off on the same play. How do you react emotionally and physically? Who steps up? Who are the leaders? Well, you're stunned, Q. It's going to take a few minutes. You're absolutely stunned. It just doesn't happen that often. So more going into the tent, helmet off. Stadium silent. Wow. Third and 14. Plummer pumps. He's going to run. Got to get to the 50. And it looks like he got it right at the line to make Antoine Winfield with a tackle on the scramble by Plummer of 14 yards. And that gets a little bit of life back here in this crowd. Well, Plummer adds this to the offense. You can run the quarterback 
and that might help this offense get a little bit more of a spark because there was some hesitancy with running Sindler because of his coming back off of a concussion. But now with Plummer in, and he's a big guy, you can run him some, and maybe that helps the offense. But on the other hand, you've now lost more. That's right. You've lost your top receiver, all everything. King Doru, freshman, gets the edge at the 40, and another first down before he's written down. 15-yard pickup for the freshman from Amarillo, Texas. Well, Q, we got a little bit of a... A resurgence by the left side of that offensive line. They really powered out and knocked off that Minnesota edge there so that they could pick up that first down. This game changes entirely from, from a tactical standpoint. Purdue's going to have to go to the ground game. Ahmad Anderson, receiver number 10, is going to have to step up and look for their tight end, Hopkins. Pass play for the redshirt freshman. Back shoulder incomplete. David Bell on the crosser. Well, they're already missing Jared Sparks one of their starting receivers. Now you take more out of there. You're really relying on a couple of freshmen who haven't had a lot of targets for Jeff Brom. You're asking those guys to step up and be the passing attack. So I would expect them to lean towards their tight end, Bryson Hopkins, to get them some plays and to try to find some of the rushing attack. Hopkins, number 89, the big tight end, who has three touchdown receptions leading Purdue. And even he's not on the field right now. Play clock is already at four. You can hear the crowd starting to chant. And Jeff Brom needing to use a timeout without getting a delay here with a minute two to go in this first quarter. Kick off your week four with Sunday NFL Countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Randy Moss ranks the best catches from today's college football action in You Got Moss. Plus, the story of how Minshew Mania has followed the rookie quarterback from Washington State to Jacksonville. And our Monday Night Football matchup is an AFC North battle between the Bengals and Steelers from Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. 8 Eastern time, Monday ESPN and the ESPN app. And our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Well, you couldn't have had a more low atmosphere mm. here at Ross Aid wow. than on the very same play. Elijah Sindelar and Rondale Moore go down. Jack Plummer got a, a little bit of the emotion back with a big first down pickup. And now we'll face second and 10 from the Minnesota 35. Now King Doru in the backfield. Bryson Hopkins in the H-back position. Here's Doru. Yards after catch, possibly two broken tackles. The shifty freshman to the 25. Watch 89, the tight end come across, get a great block there, which opens up the lane there for King Daru. So a little bit of energy, you know, push from the offensive line. A little gut check here for them. Does that affect the defense too? It's not your guys getting hurt, but there was definitely a huge lull in the game as they fake on the jet sweep. Blummer, Enzo, caught! At the seven yard line, Jackson Anthrop. What an effort by Plummer. He's being harassed. He doesn't have the time, and he just muscles this out there with a jump throw. Not a perfect throw, but he got it to Anthrop. Had he had time and got it in front of him, that's a touchdown. And you have to imagine Plummer filling in for Sindelar two weeks ago, getting his first career start. Must do some good for him. Final three seconds of the quarter. Will they get a playoff? They will. They move the pocket to the right. Running out of room. Plummer throwing it out of bounds. Looking for Ahmad Anderson in the back corner of the end zone. A devastating Purdue injury late in the first quarter. Trailing 14 to 3 here at Ross Aid after one. We're one Minnesota. And when you're starting to see how this whole thing can really work in this whole Twin Cities area, that's what we're talking about. But our fans were unbelievable today. That's the best college football environment I've ever played in as a head football coach. So let me go deep to Bateman. He's out there. Got it. Down the sideline. Let go. 30, 20, 10. Bateman has 
at the start of the second quarter. Rondell Moore, outstanding receiver for Purdue, still in the injury tent. And let's take a look. Elijah Sindelar and Rondell Moore both going down to the same play. Yeah, same play, unbelievably. You got your quarterback knocked into the ground, hit his shoulder and head, and then this misstep by Moore came up lame, and he actually tried to get up while he was down and then sunk back to the field. So Jack Plummer in relief. Xander Horvath, the running back, passing play. Plummer now running for his life and just gets rid of it as he was grabbed by Micah Dew, Treadway incomplete. And yeah, Moore is still being There's evaluated. no foul for intentional grounding. Number 89 was in the area. Third down. Moore is still in the tent being evaluated, uh, and the quarterback remains in the locker room. He walked off on his own power. It looked like to be an upper body injury, but you know, the feeling on the – from from the field gentlemen is that this game has kind of changed now this is a different Purdue offense without Sindelar and Moore different and I think that changes yeah. the picture for Minnesota's defense it's yeah. almost as if you have to throw the old script out and start over from scratch I think that's right and where do you go on third down now if you're Purdue third and goal they'll send Horvath out he's looking for Horvath sends it to him at the five and gets into the end zone for the touchdown They had five runs in this series to talk about this drive that you mentioned the change on, and they went for the swing this time. Well, pre-snap motion with Horvath. Linebacker was late going with him in man-to-man -man coverage. And that's a simple mistake. There's something to what you say, Q, about the change in the approach and the defense maybe sleeping a little bit, and they just weren't prepared for the notion of a fullback on a pre-snap motion out of the backfield. Ellinger's extra point right down the middle and 11 seconds into the second quarter you could not ask for a better series from the backup Jack Plummer. So you get your pre-snap motion here and the question becomes whose guy is he and ultimately it becomes the free safety who tries to take care of it but he might not have been the guy assigned he's looking and nobody goes now he's trying to save the play. That was Antoine Winfield who yeah. covered a lot of ground lot of at ground. Fresno State in a victory. He got a game-sealing interception, well, but well, too much that time. With a pre-snap motion like that, usually someone else is assigned and will go. Or if you're in a zone coverage, you will widen with that. Nobody moved. To me, that looked like Winfield simply trying to get there and go, I got to go try to do something because somebody's blown an assignment. So Purdue, after a massive injury-filled play that took down... Two of their top stars, Jack Plummer in relief, an 11-play, 71-yard drive. First career touchdown reception for the sophomore Xander Horvath. And Rodney Smith among those waiting back on a low kick angle toward the pylon. Wow, just snuck inside the pylon and out of bounds for the touchback as we check in with Kevin Connors. Thanks a lot. And of course, that uh, Notre Dame game, you've spent about two, two and a half hours north, northeast of us here in West Lafayette to South Bend. One pass option, and Tanner Morgan looking to throw, and he's got his man. Tyler Johnson out across the 50 yard line as Morgan is now seven for seven in the air to start this game. The pride of Minneapolis and Tyler Johnson. The guy who came back for his senior year when a lot of folks thought he would leave. He's an outstanding receiver. People have questioned his speed. He says, all I do is make plays. Just make plays. Seven for seven for Morgan, 165 yards. Tyler Johnson making plays. He's going to make enough where he might get close to Eric Decker's record for receiving yards as a golden gopher. And this is a give to Shannon Brooks off the right side. Johnson returning to school, wants to graduate for his family, for the community. Kid played high school quarterback in the 612 area code. That's North Minneapolis. And he's really worked this year hard rod on his concentration drops. That was that was a, a slight of his ability from last year. But this kid has put it all together. And, and Tyler Johnson and Rashad Bateman, 6-13, are as formidable, 
formidable as it gets outside. I agree, and Johnson has great body control and great hands, and, and they really trust him, Q. They go to him a lot. Give to Rodney Smith. And he's right in the teeth of that Purdue defense. Might have got a yard. Jalen Graham on the stop to safety. No gain officially. This will allow Purdue to get into their third down nickel package. You see a couple of guys coming onto the field. They haven't been able to do a lot of that lately, but here it is. And this is one of the few occasions when they may be able to mount some pressure. Number 18 up at the top in the slot. Can out Cam Allen, one of those nickel defenders. Third down and seven. Morgan looking, stepping up, and goes down. Derek Barnes. Morgan's down. It's fourth down. Let's quickly head back to Kevin Connors. Kev, thanks a lot. Travis Etienne, one of the outstanding running backs in America. As Jackson Anthrop waits back for Purdue on the second punt of the afternoon from Jacob Herbers. End over end. Nice checkup. And that'll be downed at the one. Great job by the special teams of Minnesota. 48-yard punt. They buried him at the one. Timeout from West Lafayette. Jack Plummer asked to come in relief for the injured Elijah Sindelar. Nice drive last time. He Rob. gave them a spark. He used his legs right off the bat to pick up a key first down. A little jump pass to Anthrop, got them near the goal line, and then he finished it off with a nice little swing pass to Horvath out of the backfield. I've got them a touchdown. So See some good spark. Good special teams as well. Nice play. It was close. Ball is not crossing the goal line in college. You can still down it inside. Yeah. Body doesn't matter. That's right. It's just the ball. Philip Howard with a nice play, by the way, on special team. So from the two-yard line. Plummer under center. Doru stacked up. Might have got a yard or two out to the four-yard line. We'll give him two. Jamal Teague among those on the tackle. Look, we weren't sure if Purdue was going to go in the tank after Sindelar and Moore went down on the same play. You've got two backup receivers in there, a backup quarterback, you don't have your stars, and all of a sudden, they're fighting and clawing and hanging in there. So, you know, you got to take your hat off to that, right? I think if you're Jeff Brom, you got to, hey, look, next man up, right? That's usually the mantra. Plummer going to move the pocket to the right. It is caught, written out at the eight yard line. Jackson Anthrop with the reception, four yard gain. Chris Williamson on defense. And we've not seen a drop back passing attack from Purdue today because. They've really struggled to protect the quarterback. So everything's quick and it's coming out quick. And you will see Minnesota adjust to that and really try to take away those quick passes. What Jack Plummer and company have on third and four. Plummer from the end zone on the cross. Anthrop's got it. And he's tackled after it looks like it's really close to that line to make, which is the 12-yard line. Yeah, crossing route, Antoine Whitfield Jr. jumps on this. Crossing route coming at you. There's Anthrap. It's a good tackle, but that's, this is the offense right now. It's all the short passes, quick things. Protect and, the quarterback. And it's a first down, which this Minnesota defense has been really good defending on third down this year, less than 30%. Doru, first contact, gets free. Nice cut. Out across the 20 for the freshman. An eight-yard gain. Thomas Barber tackle. Coney Durr applying the pressure. Yeah, a little bit of a corner blitz that time from from Durr. Minnesota showing something a little different, trying to generate some some action, and it didn't work that time. Nice little spin move. Well, for those who haven't had a chance to see Purdue this year, they have only 23 rushing yards against TCU in their last game two weeks ago. Plummer throws the out. 
and wrestled down just shy at the 24 yard line. Yeah, but it a four yard game keeps the drive alive keeps them in control keeps their defense on the sideline and allows them to get some continuity. Tell you, Plummer has really stepped forward off of that start against TCU just his body language his confidence it was 45 percent in that game with two picks. He just looks like a different quarterback today. Yeah. It's TJ Sheffield on the reception that time. Play fake. Unable to get there, David Bell. Still believe they've got to get Hopkins, the tight end, involved. He is, he's probably their, their next best player. Once you get behind you know, Moore and Sindelar, Hopkins has got to be the guy that can get you some chunk plays, that can keep a drive alive. And he was late, Rod, right now, just getting onto the field. Payne Durham, the backup tight end, comes off. And Bryson Hopkins on the left edge of the line. Well, they fake the pass out. And now lofting it downfield. Incomplete trying to hit Hopkins on the back shoulder. Yeah, you can you can get him in that slot and you have a mismatch. I mean he's a little bit too big for the nickel back and the safety that tries to handle him in that slot. Watch him come off here. In a little push, he's behind him. He's a little too big, a little bit too fast. So expect him to come back to that and maybe try to have that ball just a little bit closer. Give him a shot. Purdue is three for five on third down. This will be a third and ten for Jack Plummer, a redshirt freshman from Gilbert, Arizona. Alfred Armour's in the backfield with him. He's a blocker. Pressure coming, and it's going to be a first down. Out to the 39-yard line, David Bell, the freshman. That's a huge pickup on third and 10. They get 15. Really nice job. Again, you're counting on a freshman here, Bell, coming from your right to your left, over behind the linebackers, and a nice throw by Plummer. Plummer, no relation to Jake Plummer. That's true. You see that 13? Yeah. <laughs> and the J, Plummer, to start his name. Jack Plummer. Made his first career start in his debut two weeks ago. This will be Armour. Oh, trick play on the flea flicker, escaping pressure. But nobody's open downfield, so Plummer, using his legs, gets out of bounds. Let's check in with Kevin Connors. All right, Kev, thanks a lot. And right here, three yard loss. Is that the first time we've had the uh, Jeff Brom bag of tricks play? We might have a few more of those before the day's over. Plummer on the give. And that's King Doru, no gain. They're going to have third and about 13 coming up as Elijah Sindelar making his way back to the Purdue sideline. That left shoulder looks like. Iced up under the coat. Sindelar just back from concussion. Was through the concussion protocol and knocked out late in the first quarter. You know, that's that's just awful. It's a sloppy substitution by Minnesota. Play for the snap. They got a timeout in. They're second. So Minnesota using its second timeout before that third and 13. See if Purdue can pick up another one after the break. As we come back from break, a look at Rondell Moore, who'd been in the in the first quarter, and they lost two big players on one play. First, Elijah Sindelar, the quarterback. Yeah, he takes a hit, and that left shoulder gets pounded into the turf. And on the same play, further downfield, an odd step off of a push by Moore, and he struggled to get up after that. And Sindelar has come back to the sideline he's got a sling on and it appears to be wrapped in ice that left shoulder and this is what they're missing from their offense from this season Wow, Sindelar first two games Drew Brees like numbers Rondell Moore who had in his first 16 games this was the 17th eight of them at least 11 receptions and that doesn't mention the all-purpose yards as well 
And we saw him kind of walking on his own to get to the cart. Doesn't mean anything per se, but. Yeah, I mean, you hope the best for both yeah. of them. Meanwhile, right here, uh, Minnesota was nearly caught with too many men trying to switch out personnel. They call the timeout. Here we go. Third down and long. They go short underneath. Antrop cuts inside, and Minnesota rallies to the ball down at the 42 yard line. Antoine Winfield, a six yard game, but it's fourth down. You have to be impressed with the way that Purdue has rallied, overcome the adversity of losing their quarterback and their star player. They could have gone in a shell, and this thing could have gotten out of hand in a hurry, but they fought back, got a touchdown. They're right in there, and their defense is sort of playing spirited. This next series is going to be really telling. Brooks Cormier had a 69-yard punt. It was key early in the game, flipping the field is on. Demetrius Douglas. Signaling fair catch and makes it right about the 10 yard line back to the studio. Let's check in with Kevin Connors. All right, our old pal it Mac is, Brown. Mac is threatening Clemson. <laughs> You just don't leave the TV booth and then go to the number one team in the land and say, I'm not impressed. You can see that one uh, over on ABC. Clemson, of course, tested early last season a couple of times before the switch to Trevor Lawrence. Getting tested this afternoon. Minnesota four-point lead. Tanner Morgan on first down. Wide open, Altman Bell. Upended at the 30-yard line. Well, we've seen this earlier. This is the same play. It's the RPO with the slant behind it. Fake the run and get those linebackers inside. Throw it right behind. There's been no change or adjustment by Purdue to deal with that. And so Minnesota's gone back to it. We'll see it again. That's Bread it. and butter. Yep. Yeah, and Tanner Morgan very much comfort and rhythm. I like his feet. I like his eyes better today than what we've seen on tape. I was just going to say that. He feels really comfortable. Eight for eight now. 22 yards on that pickup. A little jet sweep action. Tyler Johnson on a dime sprinting upfield and gets close to the 40. So, Q, part of the problem with the RPO for uh, Purdue defensively, they don't have confidence to switch up and, and play man, for example, and take that away. They, they don't feel they can do man coverage. And when you can't do that, you have defenders who have a run responsibility and a pass responsibility and they become vulnerable in that run pass option conflict yes second and three off the give bouncing off rodney smith into the secondary he'll move the chains to the 45 of purdue he is a good player he's an underrated but a really good player rodney smith is a bit of a slasher you can always find him kind of keeping his balance, keeping his shoulders parallel. Good hard runner, Q. Yeah, I liked the way Morgan, the quarterback, just took a little extra beat with that mesh and waited and made the right read. And they end up getting 16 yards, Q. First down and 10. Rodney Smith off his right hip. Fifth-year senior, granted a sixth year of eligibility last year. Pass on the slant. Caught Rashad Bateman. Turns the defender away and will take it in for a touchdown. 45 yards Rashad Bateman. Well, we said you'd see it again. Didn't know it would be that fast, but it's the same play. It's the RPO with that slant behind the run fake. And when your defenders are attacking their run fits inside, you see the huge gap behind it. And Tanner Morgan feels comf confident, comfortable, puts that ball up high, right where it's an easy catch for Bateman at 6'2". Wow. That didn't take long. Nope. Four Eight. plays, 90 yards, and a minute 45. Extra point is good. Minnesota off that bye week. Rod, the offense looking good. Oh, man. Tanner Morgan rolling. Got it going. All set. Three times already.
This season, Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these by awarding uh, the Live Moss Student Section of the Year. The Purdue Boilermaker Student Section is already on the national watch list. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete or get the committee's attention by using hashtag Live Moss Student Section Contest. Minnesota, boy, a couple big plays, big touchdown plays already in the first half. Yeah, the, the RPO game is just killing Purdue right now. They're going to have to make some adjustments and deal with it, but it's a big problem. T.J. Sheffield's going to watch this one. Caught it at the one. He's going to bring it out late. And he gets tripped up over at the 15-yard line as we check out the run-pass option. Yeah, the run-pass option has been a problem. A couple touchdowns off of it already. Nick Holt, the defensive coordinator, is going to talk to his linebacker, Cornell Jones, and says, look, you got a run responsibility and a pass responsibility. But make a decision. You can't do nothing. If you're going to drop back, it'll help him out on defense. Here he is again. Don't attack the line of scrimmage, but he doesn't drop back in coverage. If he gets back, it will help take away some of that open lane that Tanner Morgan has just been picking over and over. So that's one thing that they can do is play that better. The other is, hey, they may have to go to some man coverage. Now, Tanner Morgan is a sliced and diced him 10 for 10 today. He completed his last two passes last game, so 12 straight. Whether it's tennis or basketball or football, the worst thing you can do is not make a decision. Indecision just wipes you out. You have to go one way or another. Especially at the speed of the game. Yep. Second down and nine. You know, Purdue, despite the injuries, had an answer, tried to keep it close. We'll see if they have another one as they go wide to the field side to David Bell. Out of bounds there, about three yards shy of the first. Terrell Smith with the stop. Terrell Smith with the stop. You know, defensive coordinators hate indecision. We were talking to Kevin Steele at Auburn a while back about it. You know what he said? There are a lot of dead squirrels in America because of indecision. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Saw some on the way up from the airport. Third down and short. Doru out of the backfield as a first down. Nice spin move after the catch. And that'll move the chains after a gain of seven. Like the fight by Doru. Nice hit and spin. That's a running back who's delivering the blow and not taking the blow. It's a three-star running back, King Doru. 21 rushing touchdowns as a senior in high school. In Amarillo, Texas, for a a rush team on this young team for Purdue, 25 true or redshirt freshmen played over the first three games of the season, including five that have started. And Doru with the give on first down, coming up on three and a half to go in the first half, gets four. Jeff Brom calling plays the head coach. As you see, another injury for Purdue. But with Official those two injuries, for an injured player, the pictures changed. His his game calling sheet, his laminated sheet, has changed dramatically as this well. J.J. Washington, the backup right guard, in some severe pain as we step away. Love the transfer rule because of Jalen Hurts. Isn't it better to have him on the field than holding a clipboard behind Tua? It's it's better for college football. Meanwhile, uh, we saw D.J. Washington when we left with an apparent left leg injury was helped off. Mike McCann, the starter, is in. And on second down, a slant play. They'll move the chains. It appears they've already told the headlinesman to move it. As David Bell's helmet came off, he'll have to come out for a play on a six-yard gain. Number three from Purdue. And Bell has the made a couple of play. catches today and stepped up. Off through play. He can't First replace down. more, but he's certainly given a little bit of a spark. Just joining us, Elijah Sindelar and Rondell Moore, quarterback and top receiver, both went down on the same play. Shoulder Sindelar, knee for Moore, of the three and a half minute mark of the first quarter. Here's Plummer, and here comes the pressure, and down he goes at the 25 yard line. Sam Renner with the sack. Well, there's a blitz inside. You see it coming right at you. And they just didn't do a good job of getting rid of the ball. That was Kamal Martin, 21, who came inside. Farmer's got to get rid of that football. I mean, he sees the pressure right in his face. That's, that's got to come out sooner. Now clock and game score management be becomes imperative for both coaches here. If you're Purdue, you're just trying to keep it close going into halftime. Second down and 21. Plummer looks over to the sideline with King Doru as freshman back. 
Coming up on 2.15 to go in the half. Pass is blocked and knocked down by Carter Coughlin, the defensive end. Kira, I'm with you. As, as difficult as this first half has been for Purdue, right now you want to get out of here without anything bad happening as this thing almost turned into a disaster as Carter Coughlin knocked that ball up in the air and almost had a shot at it. So you keep this play alive and on the ground yep. and the clock yep. rolling. Yep. Force Minnesota to burn their last time out and then punt the ball away. Third down and 21. There you see the numbers for Purdue, but they got to get to the 48 yard line. Plummer just trying to stay alive. Got a couple of extra blocks. Oh, tried to leave Dorood, but threw behind him into the turf incomplete. Yeah, not a fan of that. Not a fan of that. Run around, quarterback in a little bit of danger, and you stop the clock too, and they get to keep their timeout. Carter Coughlin with the pressure that time. We saw the sack and the pressure. Really first time this afternoon, Minnesota's pass rush getting a leg up. And that was a pass rush with three. As you see DJ Washington being carted off. Just too many injuries for Purdue this afternoon. Sindelar Moore and now the backup right guard, Washington. Demetrius Douglas waiting on this punt from Brooks Cormier. Quite get all of it this time, and it is fair caught at the 38 yard line by Douglas. Boomer and TJ are back with NFL primetime every Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, only on ESPN Plus. They'll have all the highlights and breakdowns from the day's games with updates after the Sunday night and Monday night games. To get ESPN Plus, download the app or go to ESPNplus.com. Good to see you. Uh, Boomer back at it on those Sundays on primetime after all those years is Tanner Morgan. Oh, he's been on fire. Look at that. I bet Boomer would have a nickname for him. <laughs> yeah, I, I would not have been a, a fan of taking the risk of giving Tanner Morgan two minutes and a timeout the way he's been on fire. And we get to see them in an open backfield look here on first down. Ten for ten to open the game. Good protection, including a 400-pounder in front of him. Flag out on the sack. Kai Higgins, nice job that time against Fa'alele. That's a loss of three pending the penalty. And it's going to be a hold on Minnesota. Holding. Offense number 51. That penalty is declined. Second down. It's Curtis Dunlap, the right guard. I, that entire defensive line had a great effort that time. Number five, Carl Aftis did a great job on his end, as did Barnes. That entire pocket got collapsed. This Minnesota offensive line, as big as it is, 11 sacks allowed coming the into the day. On the snap. 151 to go in the half. Again, empty backfield on second and 13. Romney Smith will... Motion into the backfield. Give for Smith. Bouncing. Has Fa'alele, the 400-pound blocker, and he'll get across to the 41 for six yards. Had to be light on his feet. Fa'alele had to because he had his running back coming right at him. Watch. Get out there. Get your hands on a guy. Now. They're second. Look around. Be light on your feet. Here comes Smith. Game clock to 139. And so now Purdue's going to use some timeouts to see if they can get a third down stop. And get some time left on the clock. A Fa'alele out of Melbourne, Australia. Quinn only third year, or Q only third year playing American football as a rugby guy. Yeah, Melbourne, not Australia via IMG, but he's relatively inexperienced. Still working on his craft, and, and when you break him down, he's got dominant moments where he just manhandles and mauls people, and then he's got others that you shake your head. What, what is he doing? But this is a young man. His, his mom uh, has, has moved with his brother Taylor to the Minnesota area. He's a good athlete. You know, he's got a vertical leap of about 29 inches. He can broad jump over eight feet. And he played running back in their spring football game. Q, so, he, Q, he got offers by coaches just watching him work out before he ever played in a football game. Third down and seven. See if Purdue could get a stop. Morgan on the slant. It's been so effective and second effort. It's going to get him a first down to the 49-yard line, Rashad Bateman. 
Well, we were talking about his skill set as a pass protector, and he did a nice job that last play. 90 seconds to go in the half. Big conversion. Loading up. Goes under on the check down. Smith running away from the defense. Still on his feet to the 31. Cornell Jones, the stop, 20-yard pickup. They're going up-tempo with a minute 13. Plenty of time, and they do have a timeout. They can use the entire field. Tanner Morgan is now 12 for 12 in the first half. Pressure coming. And that pressure forced him to release it early incomplete. Ben Holt that time. And this was a little game, a little pressure up the middle. Tanner Morgan recognized the delayed blitz coming by Holt. And they may need a little bit more of that because, you know, when they only bring three or four, they, they really haven't gotten it. They got once earlier in this drive, and they struggle on the back end when there's enough time for the quarterback. So you may see more pressure here. First in completion for Tanner Morgan after those first 12. Second down and 10. Little tunnel screen action, Demetrius Douglas. Wrapped up at the 25-yard line under a minute to go in the half. They pick up six. And Minnesota has pushed Purdue into more man-to-man -man coverage, so don't be surprised to see a shot at the end zone here. Third and four. Pumping, throwing open. Tyler Johnson down at the 10-yard line. They could use that last timeout if they want to. Right now they'll stop the clock to move the chains with 36 seconds to go. What a nice job by Tanner Morgan. Patience, eyes downfield. He has to clutch, and he waits for Johnson to come back around. First and 10 from the 11-yard line. Johnson makes the catch. Knocked down at the four by Simeon Smiley. That's how much confidence they have in Johnson. That ball was thrown well before Johnson turned around and made his move. E.J. Fleck, you see, was right out there to use that third, third and final charge, timeout. Timeout to Minnesota. Their third and final timeout. Averaging almost 12 yards per catch here this afternoon. Yeah, watch Johnson six. That ball's in the air. Look at that. Gets right up on him. Great nice. hands, great reaction. And nice anticipation by Morgan. Please adjust the As you game mentioned, clock bypass the seconds. NFL draft to come back to Minnesota. Not to belabor the point, but I'm going to belabor the point. Purdue could have been out of the half without these points. Remember, they had that third down play, and they threw the ball instead of burning time, and they can burn their clock. Instead, Minnesota gets the ball back, and now they're in position to get a score. Purdue will get the ball to start the second half, but your point is incredibly well taken here as Minnesota with 20 seconds, no timeouts, second down, and one. The first down marker is right at the two-yard line with 20 seconds to go. Ibrahim is in. You can run the ball, but you have to hurry if you don't get into the end zone. It'll be a pass play. Fade. Corner end zone. Touchdown. Tyler Johnson. <laughs> Why run it when you can throw it to the guy that you have the most trust in with great leaping ability, great hands, game-winning catch to his credit already this season. Stutter, fade, go up and get it. That's pretty. Two feet in, you only need one in the college game. That's just pretty. Third touchdown pass of the afternoon for Tanner Morgan. That's the 24th touchdown reception for Tyler Johnson. Now tied for third all-time in Gophers history. An extra point is good. 28-10 Minnesota with 14 seconds to go in the half. Are these receivers going to be difficult for Defensive coordinators breaking down film all season long in the Big Ten, especially in the wide open Big Ten West. Well, Johnson is so good with his hands and his body that even when you think you have good coverage on him, you don't really have him. He's so acrobatic and he's got these long arms. That's why the NFL really likes him. And people can say, well, he doesn't run a 4-3. You know what? He gets open, he catches the ball, and he's fast enough on the field. And meanwhile, Tanner Morgan is nearly perfect for Minnesota, playing his best game as, in his career 
Kentucky native, strong student, strong faith. He's a winner, 7-2 and two as a starter. But his accuracy today has been something that we have not seen on tape. He's on fire. You're right, Q. And he's a guy that P.J. Fleck has believed in for a long, long time. And, you know, it takes a lot of trust between the two of them when you decide to follow a coach to his new school and you don't even visit the place. 16 of 17 passing and close to a career high passing yards in the first half as we have a touchback here with 14 seconds to go in the half. So he was committed oh, and going to attend Western Michigan, go to right. Kalamazoo. Right. P.J. Fleck accepts the job at Minnesota, and then Morgan signs with Minnesota without even taking a visit? If you're a parent and your kid comes to you and says, yeah, I'm going to follow this coach because he's going to Minnesota, I mean, you go, uh, uh, okay, son? <laughs> you got to have a lot of trust and faith, and they've got a very good relationship, and they do believe in each other. It's been a remarkable turnaround. It's seven and two since he took over. Draw play here near the end of the half as Doru is knocked down at the 38-yard line. 13-yard pickup here in the final nine seconds of this first half. 30-second charge, timeout Purdue. Their final timeout. Jeff Brom using their third time out here with nine seconds to go trying to get into the locker room shortly it gives us a chance to remind everybody number five ohio state will take on nebraska in lincoln 7 30 eastern time on abc and the espn app adrian martinez is amazing he is a guy that if, if he's able to pull off an upset tonight the way the schedule lays out for him and the way he performs, he's a guy we could be talking about in November in that Heisman race. He is stellar. Well, he was uh, pretty impressive in the second half rally at Illinois yep. last week. Uh, everyone, uh, Kevin Connors will keep everyone up to date on Clemson, yep. Alabama. Could Ohio State be well, able to trouble? Look, no one's playing better than Ohio State. But remember, about this time last year, Purdue took down that's Ohio right. State That's right. at home behind Rondell Moore having an extraordinary game. Wouldn't surprise me to see Martinez have an extraordinary game and, you know, maybe pull off the same thing. On ABC at 7.30 Eastern time. And an interception here in the final seconds by Kamal Martin after the timeout. And it be the last play of the first half on a pick. Well, well there might it. have been a second left. That seems to be... The yeah, indication they're, they're gonna have most to take of the this players. to replay. That's right. Please reset the game clock. Two seconds. Yeah. Zero two. You see, sometimes you just want to get out of the half, and, and you don't need the timeouts. You don't need. You need to get to the locker room. He's trying to find Ahmad Anderson off his left hand, and Kamal Martin comes down with his first. Yeah, there should be two seconds on the clock. Now you're Minnesota. This is another gift. You have an opportunity for three points or to take a shot at the end zone. Hey, you know, again, belaboring the point, but sometimes just get to the half. Get to the locker room. Well, they are going to opt for the three points on the gift. Now, Michael Lance had a 37-yarder turned into a game winner at Fresno State. Had a 36-yarder blocked in the last game two weeks ago, and this is a long one from 51 yards. Yeah, this is, this is a wing and a prayer. This is beyond his range, but he may nail it. Who knows? Eason leg and just short. So a free chance for three. Couldn't come up with it. The first half. But Minnesota with a healthy first half from Tanner Morgan. 298 yards passing. As we head to the studio for our Army National Guard halftime report after these messages. Don't kid with COVID. M Health Fairview wants you to know that what you do today will affect your family and our community tomorrow. Social distancing helps you avoid contact with those who may be infected with the virus. What can you do? Steer clear of crowds of 10 or more people. Keep a distance of six feet between you and others in public spaces. And if possible, work from home. Wash your hands, avoid big groups. Stay home, don't go out. We've all got to do our part. Do you know what the U of M does for you? From farms to breweries and orchards to markets, discover how the University of Minnesota is cultivating a new crop of Minnesota businesses. Do you know what the U of M does for you? 
from hooves to hands and paws to possibilities. Discover how the University of Minnesota is making medical advances for all Minnesotans. Welcome back to the Big Ten on ESPN from ross Aid Stadium. West Lafayette, Indiana, the Golden Gophers of Minnesota bidding to stay unbeaten with the lead over Purdue. 28 to 10, an outstanding first half for Tanner Morgan. Sophomore quarterback, nearly perfect. Three touchdowns to his three outstanding receivers, Tyler Johnson, Rashad Bateman, Chris Altman, Bell, and Purdue. He's lost its starting quarterback and top receiver will have the ball first as the kickoff goes out back of the end zone as we check in downstairs Quint Kesnick spoke with both coaches yeah Jeff Brom told me that his quarterback Jack Jack Plummer has got to be a little less tentative step up in the pocket and throw the ball with some velocity look look for Purdue to take some shots on first down when protection is a little easier they'll go ma max protect and perhaps stretch the field if you're Minnesota second half is about ground and pound P.J. Fleck as a head coach terrific with the lead they'll try to uh, shrink this game matriculate get first downs and use the clock well Q he's got the offensive line to do it he knows how to work a clock and manage a game 14 and 1 when he leads looking for a sixth consecutive win dating back to last season this is King Doru off the left side the freshman will have a first down and a 12 yard run 13 yard run to open up this second half yeah first time they've run the power play and it worked out well for them that's just collapsed that left side and picked up a first down they really do need to have a good start here in the second half Jack Plummer in relief of Elijah Sindelar on a Doru run he's got wide open spaces across midfield gets to the 46 yard line we had two big injuries to the two best players of Purdue on one play in the first half yeah the very same play you get your quarterback Sindelar pounded into the turf hurts his shoulder and then a misstep here after being pushed more hurts what appears to be his left knee and neither return to the ball game. Jack Plummer in relief and they're going to the ground Doru the freshman gets spun around trying to reach out to the 45 yard line taken down by Carter Coughlin again of one and just for good measure if you haven't had enough injuries as a Purdue fan lost an offensive lineman DJ Washington also went down in the first half and went down with an apparent left leg injury so there's your injuries from the offensive side for Jeff Braum in his third year as head coach of Purdue will swing pass out to Anthrop who's chipped down at the 45 yard line a gain of one and we were concerned that Purdue flagged down might, Rod yeah might go into the tank when they lost those three starters to injuries but instead they fought back and it wasn't until just before half that they gave up more Illegal points substitution defense 12 men on the field five yard penalty second down PJ Fleck discussing this on the far side with the officials asking if, if in fact Purdue had substituted where they could match but many times Minnesota's trying to get their pass rush specialists in the game it's twice now that they've been caught in some sloppy substitutions that's right they got the timeout in last time in the first half Purdue down 18 and a run to the right side forward progress to the 39 for Xander Horvath yeah a little bit tougher on, over on that side for Purdue Thomas Barber getting up there getting involved he's an excellent linebacker you mentioned Barber around the Minnesota campus and that family's been tied to that place for a long long time 42 years not consecutively of Barber's at Minnesota but Thomas Barber's father Marion the second of course was a Minnesota Golden Gophers standout running back in the late 70s on the slant caught David Bell and spins inside the 25. A little bit of Minnesota's medicine with this slant route. Bell trying to pick up some of the slack with Moore out has really been a, a help today for, for Purdue. Big body, 6'2", 210. Plummer is 11 of 19 in relief of Sindelar. They get a shot for the end zone. Anderson being held. That's going to be a pass interference call. DeAndre Thomas in coverage, grabbing the jersey of Ahmad Anderson. Yeah, easy call. Nice job by Anderson getting behind him, but a smart pass play. Defense number 31. 
15 yards in the previous spot. Automatic first down. Smart play by Thomas because if he doesn't commit the pass interference, this is a, this is a touchdown. He grabs. That's a smart play. At the distance, we'll mark it to about, about the eight-yard line. First series at a timeout, down 18. You know, they had a burst in the first quarter, as you pointed out, after the injuries. And now trying to get one here on a Doru run inside the five and stems the run across the goal line. First career touchdown run for the freshman King Doru. What a hole inside. Unbelievable blocking by Beach, the center, and McCann, the right guard. Wow. They open up a huge hole inside. That is the first rushing touchdown by a Purdue player, not a quarterback. Elijah Sindelar had the only rushing touchdown for the Boilermakers this year till King Doru moments ago. J.D. Dellinger's extra point, and that one's good. Nice first half for Purdue. Backup quarterback and a freshman running back gets him seven. Timeout here at Ross 8. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. Back in West Lafayette, Indiana, Purdue trailing at halftime, able to get a touchdown from that man, King Doru, to open up this third quarter. And now the Boilermakers will kick off, and we'll see what Minnesota has. Their offense has been so impressive in the first half. End over end kick, and this one's going to sail out the back of the end zone. Let's take a look at that touchdown run. Hey, look, it's not often that a running back sees a huge hole on the goal line. King Daru, watch him here. He's going to get a great block by McCann, 79, and Victor Beach, 56, the center. Open this thing up. Look at that thing. He sees this, and he goes, my eyes cannot believe how wide open that is. First touchdown by a running back for Purdue this year. Now the question will be this Purdue defense, if they could slow down Tanner Morgan, who had a 16 for 17 first half, 298 yards. It's about five yards off his career bests on the RPO. Going deep to one of his big receivers, Bateman juggled and caught. What an outstanding catch. That is a 50-50 ball that Bateman took away from Mosley. Great coverage, great position. Now who makes the play? And Bateman made the play. Reminded me of David Tyree a little bit where the ball was yeah. stuck on the crown of the helmet. 42 yards, that's 340 and a career high passing yards for Tanner Morgan. From the 33, first down, Smith. Speedy gets to the edge, gets upended. Now, remember in the first half, we saw the, the RPO with the slant that got so many big plays. Well, that's an adjustment. We saw that long pass. Instead of the slant, they took it up the seam because now you have Purdue expecting the slant, and their linebackers are actually getting back in coverage. So they just ran that seam on it and threw it up for their guy to make a play. And, you know, he did. And it's the opposite of the defense, which is giving different looks. Now the RPO offense yep. giving Purdue some different action. Second down and two. Smith bouncing out. He's going to have a first down out across the 20-yard line. Simeon Smiley in on the stop. He is such an underrated runner. Tore his ACL open last season. Bounced back. He's a guy who breaks tackles, uses his pads well, kind of slithers along the line of scrimmage, good vision until he finds it, and then he goes 100%. Went over 3,000. Rushing yards did Rodney Smith in the opener, season opener. And he's out over 4,400 all-purpose yards. A flip on the misdirection. Tyler Johnson buried from behind. Picked up a couple not, to the 18-yard line. Not fooling Cornell, Cornell Jones. Not falling for that one. Sitting right in there waiting. Young man from Miami Central High School. A powerhouse in the high school game in the Florida area. 
You don't find many of those Florida players who come up here. How did he lose the first half of his number? Yeah, the six. This half the six is gone. Yeah, these are the alternate jerseys Purdue wearing today here at home, the gray unis. That's when you go to the ref and say, see, I was held. <laughs> Second down, Smith dives across the 15-yard line. We'll give Ben Holt the tackle there, four-yard gain. Third and short coming for the Gophers. Boiler train's been blowing awful lot on third down. Minnesota's had, you know, the big plays in this game for their scoring. Purdue's third down defense hasn't been awful. Just giving up the big plays in the first half. Well, this would be a big one here. Holding into a field goal attempt would really get the crowd going. Play clock down to three. Morgan on the screen. Douglas has it. He's dropped for a loss at the 15. Nick Holt, the co-defensive coordinator, got to like that right there. Yeah, really aggressive, really good playing. Now they got a chance. A chance to get back in this if they hold in the three here. Michael Lance is on for a 33-yard field goal attempt. And they attempted a 51-yarder at the end of the half that was short. Lance's kick right through the goal posts and good. So Purdue's defense holding Minnesota to three. Gophers extend the lead. Two-score lead, 14 points as we break. Welcome back to ross Aid Stadium, West Lafayette, Purdue. Let's go, Down 14 to Minnesota here, just about midway through this third quarter. Well, Purdue started the second half with a touchdown drive and then held Minnesota to a field goal, so they're sort of back in this thing. And if you have another drive and cut this to a one possession game, this place, these cra this crowd, will really, really start to get into it. Of course, they... Lost Rondell Moore in the first quarter, great receiver, but also returner. This is their kickoff specialist, Grant Ryersey. We'll have TJ Sheffield and Ahmad Anderson back to return for the Boilers. In danger of a one in three start, down 14. High end over end kick. Sheffield a yard deep. Tripped up. Just past the 15 to the 16 yard line. Jack Plummer in relief of Elijah Sindelar. Rod has done a pretty good job trying to keep uh, the Boilermakers in this ball game. Yeah, he's done a very good job. He's used his feet enough to get key first downs, and the short passing game has worked well. And, and then last drive, they took a shot deep, and it actually worked out getting a pass interference call for them to set up a touchdown. First down from the 16. That's a keep. And right into the hands of this Minnesota defense and this crowd is hoping for a personal foul. No penalty marker comes out. A loss of three on the sack. Philip Howard. A little bit of a tug down there and I guess if you're Jack Plummer. Probably wondering why you're hearing the whistles. Yeah, the fans didn't like it. They felt he was slammed to the ground. So a loss of three sets up second and 13. Bummer checks it down on the swing. And Doru's out shy of the 20. Five-yard gain for the freshman getting the start. For Jeff Prom's Boilermakers. Remember last year they made a bowl game despite an 0-3 start to the season. They were able to make a turnaround. Young team dealing with injuries and even more injuries now to yeah. star players. Well, they were pretty banged up coming into this game. And you add on to that, and Jeff Brom told us that as far as the Big Ten West race goes, 
Chargers right now. Minnesota, their first of the half. He thinks his team is at this the bottom. The had, they've out. done nothing to be included in the, the discussion of the Big Ten West. Minnesota, P.J. Fleck using a timeout, his first of the second half. When you think, look at this Purdue team, one and two, really disappointing loss to start the season. I mean, you go back and you watch that Nevada tape, and it's amazing how they could lose that game. But, Rod, you look at offensive line and defensive line. To win in this conference, I, I think both of those areas have to be improved if you're Jeff Brom. This team has the skill if Sindelar's healthy and Rondale Moore is healthy. They have the skill, but to me, it's O-line, D-line. And quite honestly, their offensive line has actually acquitted themselves a little better today in my eyes. Yes, they have. But I think Jeff Brom would agree with you, Q, and his rebuild plan, and this is year three, is, is really you know building the offense and defensive line, recruiting nearby and in the, in the south as well. But he's relying on transfers also. One of those recruits from the... South Doru from Texas, Plummer running for his life. On third down, flag comes in, gets it off to Bell, absorbs the contact. It's a first down pending this flag. Might have a holding, though, back on the five. You, you think, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to wipe out a 12-yard game. Offense number 66, 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat third down. Alex Criddle, the left guard, penalized that time. Correction, half the distance. And this really puts them in a tough bind. Similar situation before halftime. They actually tried to throw and pick it up and weren't able to do that. And in this situation, you think, run the ball, try to get a little bit more room for your punter, kick it away, and hope your defense can give you another stop. First penalty of the afternoon against Purdue has him backed up here on third and 17. Edge pressure, set up a screen over the middle. Dorup. Two and a half years, going to school year round. Got so much respect for those guys. Sorry, Mark. You know, to get multiple degrees, to use football yep. to further their lives. I mean, it, it, I have so much respect for, for what they do and that capitalizing on this opportunity that's that's been given to them. It's amazing, Q. You know, you, you leave high school early, you get that semester. Then you go to summer school, and all of a sudden, you, you know, you've got a year of credits. And if you keep at it, he's, as he has, he's in great shape. Good to see St. Just uh, hop up, just kind of shaking that right arm and wrist. And a pass caught at the 50-yard line. Another, Milton Wright. Another freshman. We've seen three freshman receivers for Purdue make plays today out of necessity because of all the injuries. And they haven't shied away. Milton right from Louisville, Kentucky. Big target, 6-3. Gain of 12, first and 10, Boilermakers. The moment hasn't been too big for those freshman receivers. They've made catches. Doru got through the initial contact. Then the cavalry came and a loss of one on that play. Yeah, that was Martin who came inside and uh, wasn't, wasn't able to make the tackle because of a nice spin move. Well, the Minnesota offense hasn't been the problem in this 3-0 start. It's the defense, and here's Maffe chasing down the QB. Finds an open man in the middle of the field. That's Jackson Anthrop inside the 40-yard line of the Gophers. Fourteen more yards for this Boilermaker offense. First and ten. Little play action. Taking a shot. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Incomplete. Trying to find Ahmad Anderson. Great coverage down the field. And also great blitz pickup by Purdue. Plummer had plenty of time to make the throw because they picked up the blitz. But great coverage out there by Durr. What's your, been your read on the Minnesota D? They gave up 21, 35, and 32 in the first three games of the season. I, I, I think they've played well. They've turned up the pressure. A little bit more aggressive play by them. More blitzing today than they have earlier in the season, and that seems to fit well with them. A 
Well, nowhere to go this time. And taken down that to Seizi Otomawa, a redshirt sophomore from Indianapolis. Loss yeah. of three. Yeah, Otomawa did, did a great job of getting off that block, stifling, stifling his offensive lineman, tossing him aside, and then making the tackle. Textbook. Some of their young and some of their backups. Otomawa there. Mafe has been chasing Plummer around, and now we got a third and 13. Pass is picked off. Interception, Kamal Martin, linebacker. And Minnesota forces the turnover here late in the third, second one. Oh, on the Martin field. just the read Plummer's eyes Minnesota. the entire way. Watched him look to the right side and stayed with him and just tracked the ball. This is when you're in zone coverage. You're looking at the quarterback, C-21, staring right at him, staring at his eyes, and he goes right to the ball. That is great, great linebacker play. That is fantastic. Go to that curl. Eyes on the quarterback. Eyes led him right to the ball. Kamal Martin, who missed two of the first three games this season. Two picks today for Mr. Martin. And this go for offense will take over at the 33. Rodney Smith bouncing off defenders to the 40. <laughs> When we were looking at the Big Ten West. I didn't hear your response. Wisconsin, Iowa, did you start buying Wisconsin completely after they uh, just woodshedded Michigan? I think I jumped on the train, yeah, mm -hmm. after that Michigan win. Uh, Iowa looked very impressive today. Again, non-conference victory over Middle Tennessee. Be fun to watch Nebraska tonight, the ABC game against Ohio State. And then the big question is this Minnesota team. Great schedule set up, looking to go to 4-0. Big Ten opener. And they're going to continue to run clock here late in the third behind Rodney Smith, taking defenders with him a couple extra yards. A chain mover with 38 seconds to go here in the third. Well, this is the most complete game we've seen from Minnesota. I mean, their first three games, they've been the cardiac kids of college football. I mean, taking everything down to the last play or into overtime, coming up with great throws and catches and an end zone pick in overtime. They've done all that to get to 3-0. Today, they've been much more dominant, much more consistent on both sides of the ball. One thing for sure, the Big Ten West wide open at the start of the year. Starting to form. Final seconds of the third quarter. Smith spinning. Got to about midfield, and that'll do it for the third. And I think it's time for P.J. Fleck to get his uh, exercise in. Third quarter. We saw him at the end of the first quarter take Don't a healthy sprint. Balls Don't let the midfield. coach beat you. Falls in midfield. There's hardly anywhere to sprint. <laughs> That's right. We had him at the one-yard line last time. Nowhere to go. Fourth quarter. Don't kid with COVID. M Health Fairview wants you to know that what you do today will affect your family and our community tomorrow. Good hand washing protects you and can slow the spread of the virus. Use soap and warm water. Be sure to wash both sides between your fingers, fingernails, thumbs, and wrists. Scrub for at least 20 seconds. Wash early and often. Wash your hands, avoid big groups. Stay home, don't go out. We've all got to do our part. Minnesota Golden Gophers, 15 minutes away. From keeping the record clean in the loss column. A 38-17 lead as we get the fourth quarter started from midfield. Tanner Morgan and company, 388 passing yards, four touchdowns. In their Big Ten opener, and they'll continue to go to Rodney Smith, who finds a big hole. Out across the 35 to the 33-yard line. That was over on that right side behind Lele. 400 pounds and his running mate Dunlap 345. That's a lot of beef on that right side. 750 pounds pushing Purdue out to the sideline. Yikes. Yeah. For those uh, on Fa'alele, we talked about only his third year playing football. I was reading an interesting story on him that I think has aged me because he was learning American football rules. He said that not only playing football helped, but playing Madden yeah. also helped him. A generation game raised on Madden football video games. Smith again. Out across the 30-yard line. Back from a an oblique injury. Picks up four. I, I still think it's totally amazing that 
coaches went out and saw him before he played football because he wanted to know how to play before he got into a game. And they saw him work out, and at 6'9", 400 pounds, they're like, yeah, you have a scholarship. I haven't seen you play, but you've got a scholarship. <laughs> Six feet nine, 400 pounds. That run, by the way, for Rodney Smith, he's now got 17 rushes for 100 yards. So for the seventh straight meeting between Minnesota and Purdue, the Gophers have a 100-yard rusher. So Shannon Brooks this time upended at the 26. So we know Fa'alele is 6'9 and 400. There's our Quint Kesnick oh, getting close. Yeah, that gives you, gives you an idea. <laughs> He, he's bigger than the other linemen. I mean, Q has no chance against him. None of us have a chance against him. I'm erroneously listed at 5'9", 164. <laughs> well, we know the 164 is wrong. <laughs> I mean, that's like two people right there. Yeah. Well, and everybody recruited him. He chose Minnesota. No, he chose P.J. Fleck. Felt like home to him. Well, they got a little IMG pipeline going on as well. I got a counterbalance when you're rowing the boat right on the other side, so it doesn't list. And here goes Tanner Morgan taken down by Ben Holt, the fifth year senior. Yeah, Holt makes the play. He he's happy. He's playing for his dad, the defensive coordinator, and playing for his old head coach from Western Kentucky. That's Brom. And you know who's happiest of all about that? Mama Holt. Mama Holt. <laughs> Mama Holt has has her boys together and She's got her son with uh, the likelihood of picking up a degree from Purdue, which is not a shabby thing when you think about what didn't they have a great stat on them? The first and last person to walk on the moon. That's right. Of the 25 wow. astronauts. Wow. I was trying to figure out where the Gophers are. It's fourth down. Where's the punting? Game. Offense. All right. Five yard That's a different way to take a delay. Still fourth down. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's off on the sideline. Please adjust the game clock. Rod, have you minutes, seen that before 13, where everyone no. just disappears from the field and takes the five yards? Thank you. This would be the time you go. Oh, trick play, right? Maybe they were counting to make sure they had everybody, right? I still have to drop my moon landing information on you at some point. Okay. Jackson Anthrop waiting back inside the 10. High end over end. Special teams with a chance here. Oh, it checks up beautifully. And Minnesota's going to down that inside the one. Jacob Herber's one happy punter, a 41-yard punt. I guess the extra five-yard delay game helped. P.J. Fleck knows what he's doing. Gophers a 38-17 lead, 12 minutes to go in the game. Injury's a big story since late in the first quarter, Rod. Yeah, changed this game entirely. Purdue lost their quarterback. And their star player, one of the best players in the country. And Ronda Moore goes down with false step. Somehow injured that left knee. And Sindelar, the quarterback, injured his left shoulder. It's been the backup plumber since then. And right now near the goal line. That's Plummer himself will get two yards out to the three. Yeah, you know, we, we can show the injuries, but we, we can't tell you or show you exactly what happened in the stadium. All the air went out of the stadium when Rondell Moore went down. You know, he tried to get up once, and as he fell back down, this collective groan came over the stadium, too. It was, it was palpable, wow. and it all oh. happened on one play. If you're just joining us, that was the same play. Both those guys injured. Pass out, Anthrop trying to spin through the tacklers. Gets out of bounds at the 11, Williamson. And to Purdue's credit, they fought hard after that to kind of stay in the game. They didn't lose contact with Minnesota until right before halftime. It's amazing to me, Rod. Think about college football and how quickly things can change dramatically, whether it's Florida and Felipe Franks, USC, JT Daniels. I mean, you never know. Yep. Pump fake. Going into coverage, incomplete that time for Milton Wright. As we check in the studio, here's Kevin Connors.
Kevin, thank you wow. so much. A couple close games yeah. going on. Man, I did not see that coming. I thought Clemson was at about the point where they were going to start taking off, but Mac Brown's team giving them all that they want. Notre Dame also in a close game with Virginia. North here in Indiana is King Doru has nowhere to go. The Minnesota defense rallying to the ball. Thomas Barber a stop. Yeah, Thomas Barber, part of that Barber clan doing a great job inside out. Six foot, 240 pound senior. Now, number 41 should look familiar. That was the number his dad wore. Yep. Of course, his uh, brother, Marion, played with the Cowboys, played at Minnesota, and uh, Dominique also, Barber. Another brother, all tied to Minnesota. On third and 13. Plummer, first down. Showing us some wheels here a couple of times. Yeah, he's brought this aspect to it. Winfield makes the tackle, but stays alive, and he's run a couple of times to get some key first downs. And, and this was a good first down for them. It gets them out of the shadow of their goal post. They won't have to punt from their own end zone and a chance to get a little bit of momentum going. 22 yards on the ground for Jack Plummer. Under 10 minutes to go. Give to Armour will get bottled up. An easy schedule for Purdue. They're one of the four, one of just four Power 5 teams playing 11 Power 5 games in 19. You got the Big Ten schedule starting today, so that accounts for nine. They've already played Vanderbilt and TCU in this third season for Jeff Brom. Yeah, and, you know, they've got a problem. I mean, they're young. They've got a number of injuries. All their star players are out, banged up. That's Anderson out on the top of your screen, breaking a couple of tackles and moving the chains. What an effort by Anderson. He's not a big guy, about 170 pounds, 5'11", but you saw the way he fought to get the extra yardage. We've seen a lot of that today by Purdue on offense and defense. They may be young, not experienced, but these guys are, are scrappers. And I think uh, Lamont Anderson's played a little better than anticipated mm -hmm. I think here that's in his true. redshirt freshman year. This is Armour. Nice ankle tackle by Kamal Martin. Has already got two picks today. Uh, a quarterback in high school, Martin, coming up with two big defensive plays on turnovers and that tackle there. Yeah, he's very athletic at 6'3", 245. That inside linebacking spot. Really good hands, ball skills, as you saw from the two picks. Knows how to use his hands to ward off blockers. Low snap. Plummer looking for the backup tight end incomplete to Payne Durham. Let's get another score check. Here's Kevin Connors. Thank you very much, Kev. Well, we'll keep an eye on that one. Tenth play of this drive here. Ten on the play clock. Plumber's pass into tight coverage is caught, but going to be about a yard short of the first. I'm surprised St. Juice didn't pick that off. He was sitting right there looking at Plumber, but top of the screen. He's in great position to get that ball. He just couldn't get himself completely around um, the receiver over there. And we'll bring up fourth down and one. And trailing by three touchdowns going for it here. They're two for three this year on fourth. Need a yard, and they're going to get it thanks to King Doru. <laughs> Well, one thing if you're a Purdue team, you're never going to give up on a game when Jeff Brom's your head coach. He's going to keep these guys going. You mentioned the youth, despite what appears to be a one and three start. Little play action on first down. Caught by 
by David Bell down at the 15. I'm telling you, these youngsters, these freshman receivers, they have shown up today. Bell in single coverage here, actually his own coverage and zone coverage turns to single coverage. He goes up and makes the play. This is a 50-50 ball. These guys are being aggressive. We've seen that from Bell. We've seen it from Wright. We've seen it from Anderson. All freshman receivers. Well, from talked about recruiting in the home state. David Bell was the Gatorade Player of the Year here in the state of Indiana. Plummer from the 16. He's going to run. Chipped down inside the 10 by Carter Coughlin. Well, if you're Jeff Brom, you have to be pleased with the way that your team has fought and continued to fight despite losing Moore, Cinderar, you know, losing Washington. They, they lost so many guys on offense, three starters, yet they never kind of gave it up. They just kept plugging away. And I think the spark, these freshman receivers have provided a lot of that. I'm sure freshman backup, Jack Plummer at quarterback. And the screen set up, but the pass is short, intended for Doru, who thought they had it set up, but ball might have been tipped with 6.10 to go. Yeah, it was tipped uh, before it got out there. The Coffin who gets it? Yeah, it is. That was a fortunate tip, because that was a well-designed screen. Yeah, you could see Doru was upset. He kind of stamped his foot into the ground, knowing something was set up for him. Nice job by Coughlin. Third and three. Flags on the play. Three of them. Terrell Smith interfering with David Bell. Pass interference. Defense number four. Foul occurred in the end zone. By rule, the ball be placed at the two yard line. First down. All he did was tackle the receiver. <laughs> I guess that counts as pass interference. Are we seeing more P.I. calls, Rod? Well, on the underthrown balls we are, but, you know, you got to be able to turn around and find the ball. But that one was not even close, Q. He, he just tackled the guy. Doru diving to the goal line. Touchdown! Big Doru with his second. And still 6.01 to go here on a 99-yard drive. The ball come loose after he crossed the goal line. All you got to do is break the plane. That's it. Near side linesman making the rule of touchdown and J.D. Dellinger out for the extra point. Trying to make it a two-score game. He does. 99-yard drive. It took six minutes. 6.01 left here at ross Eight Stadium. Back at ross Eight Stadium, a look at the Trent Gate. Tyler Trent, of course, uh, honored posthumously with the Student Gate, the northeast side of ross Eight Stadium. He passed away on January the 1st, certainly inspired so many of us with his courageous battle of cancer. Students touch his plaque at the Tyler Gate before they enter the stadium. It was dedicated back on September 7th, which, by the way, would have been his 21st birthday. You know, that's not the only place around here you see references to him or his name. Up in the football offices, you see his name, you know, pictures and things. It, it, he's really meant a lot to the Purdue community. Well, right here, down 14, thinking onside kick opportunity for yep. the Boilermakers. Why not? Try to steal a possession. we got some hands team out for Minnesota. The key is they got to get a second hop out of this ball. And they got a good second hop, and it's picked up by Horvath. And he's got it at the 30-yard line. What a beautiful kick by Dellinger. It's that second hop that gets you the opportunity, and it worked perfectly. So Purdue gets it back. Down two touchdowns, but a perfectly executed onside kick. Stay with us. Purdue on the right, J.D. Dellinger 
getting the onside kick perfectly executed. Yeah, you know, Seth Green is in the middle here. He's the guy that is responsible for fielding it, but no one's behind him, so he feels he's got to take this second hop. It bounces up and hits him, and the kicker is always trying to get that second bounce. And as a hands team member, normally that second bounce, if it's too high, you let it go and let someone behind you get it. But Seth Green had no one behind him because that was a middle kick. Felt he had to take it. The ball hit him in the mask. And Xander Horvath, who was going right up the middle, was right there for the loose ball. And this drive will start at the 47-yard line, down 14. Doru. What a tackle. By Kamal Martin, who's been one of the defensive stars for Minnesota today. Yeah, he's had a day. He has had quite the day. He's been that extra guy getting into the box, unblocked, and he's taken full advantage of it. A couple of picks and a number of tackles. This is the only fourth quarter this season. Minnesota has not been behind. And now David Bell off the catch, able to drag a receiver, a defender or two out across the 50 to the 47. Gain of five. A short passing attack and guys being scrappy. They don't, they don't really have the, the pocket protection for the deep pass. When they do, they really have to go max protect and hope they get single coverage to take a shot. But they don't protect the quarterback real well for the deep ball. Bell's got 103 yards receiving. This is third and four. Quick slant hit by St. Juiced and knocked down. It's fourth down. Tavon Devers on that play. Now the thing is, when you lose star players like Moore, you know, you lose that trusted guy in the clutch. You know you can count on him. Now they've got untested freshmen. The guy who is most trusted now would be Hopkins, the tight end. But they haven't really gone to Hopkins all day. They converted their only other fourth down, and they got fourth and four right here. Who do you trust? I trust 89. 89, and I think Bell, number three, is a close second. Here's Plummer. Floats one. Left sideline. And it's in! Ahmad Anderson converting the fourth down and the Boilermakers still rolling. They're just throwing it up and telling these freshmen, go play, go get it. This is another 50-50 jump ball, and he's asking his guy to make the play, and Anderson does. These guys have been aggressive. All three of these freshman receivers, whether it's Wright, Bell, or Anderson. Wow. With a Minnesota player down, Braylon Oliver, linebacker, back at midfield. As they massage that right hip with 4.53 to go. Purdue the score, the onside kick, big fourth down conversion. Let's check in with Kevin Connors. Thanks, Kev. Close game there. Uh, Notre Dame has opened a, an 11-point lead early fourth quarter against Virginia. Michigan State and Indiana tightening up as well. Hoosiers down four in East Lansing. 12 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And right here, Gophers had a three-touchdown lead. And the fans who've made their way from Minneapolis looking for some uh, divine intervention as well here. Yeah. Later. Look, every time Purdue gets a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, they're throwing the ball up and telling their freshman receivers, hey, you don't have to read anything. Just go get the ball. And they have been coming down with it. Mott Anderson, the latest big catch from Jack Plummer's 21 of 37, 220 yards. Over that there. They got it again. Pass out of bounds looking for Anthrop. They've got Minnesota back into playing man free coverage a free safety in the middle and single coverage on the outside another opportunity to, to throw that ball up and see if your freshman receivers can make another play Milton Wright another freshman receiver coming into the lineup now and he's the tallest of the crew he's 6 3 at the top of your screen at the 25 yard line. Little out pass is caught by Bell. 
It's going to be another first down. We'll move the chains out to the 13. Mark rolls with 4.25 to go, down two scores after that 12-yard pickup. Considering how hot you've had these freshman receivers, you got a whole lot of room up top. Plummer. Extending the play and sending it out of bounds. And they're on the hash mark, so to the wide field, they have a chance to to create a matchup out there and use that field. Minnesota secondary getting tested here. Now they put three receivers to the top, so down to the bottom, they should have, down here, they should have single coverage. Plummer on the screen. Doru. Doru! Third effort, touchdown! Are you kidding me? He just refused to go down. He uses his hands to keep his balance. Does he get into the end zone before touching? Look at that right hand. He broke the plane. That was a really, really gutsy run. Freshman from Amarillo, Texas has his third score. And we got ourselves a seven-point game with 3.59 to go. Ross Age Stadium and the Minnesota fans should be a fun ending. Sports Center after UCLA Arizona with Stan Verrett and Neil Everett. Kirk Herbstreit with his biggest takeaways from week five. Closer look at Ohio State, Nebraska and Virginia, Notre Dame and title fight breakdowns from the ring and the octagon. Sports Center after college football on ESPN and the ESPN app. Gilmore, Quint Kestnick, I'm Mark Kestisher. We got a ball game. We had an onside kick last time. What are you thinking here? Well, same lineup. I kick it right at the same guy or, or pooch it to about the 30-yard line and see if I can outrun him for it. It's like Winfield's in the middle now, but they are kicking it deep. Trust in the defense. Yep. All right. How did Purdue get back into this ball game? Down three touchdowns, down seven now. Yeah, they had a little run here when they were led by a freshman, King Doru takes a run in. Then the onside kick, they got the lucky second bounce, recovered it, which set up this screen pass. And then the freshman again, Doru, takes this one in, almost crawling into the end zone. And we got a one possession game, and Purdue is trusting their defense to get them the ball back. All that happened in a four minute stretch. The two touchdowns, the onside kick. Minnesota's going to try to bleed some clock. Rodney Smith has nowhere to go. That was a huge first down play, a negative play, and Purdue is sitting on their timeouts as well. You can hold one here and see what happens second down and then manage the clock. If you're Minnesota, are you ready to put the ball in the air? It's what's gotten them to 38 points. Over the seven-point lead, Purdue has all three of its timeouts. Clock running, 3.25 to go. That's been the run pass option, the slant that's worked for them. Pass and Johnson makes the catch. Nice dive on the sideline. And inbounds. Bach continues to run. Charge timeout for new. First and a half. That's a good catch. A Anytime the receiver's hands are underneath the ball, that's going to be a catch, even if the ball touches the ground. Purdue using its first of three timeouts. Try to save some time. 3-0-1 left. You see third and six coming up. This is the play where they need it. Now you really can't speak any more highly. Three minutes, ten seconds. Well, they're going to add nine more seconds onto the clock. 
put it up to 310. And before the third and sixth play here, let's check in back in the studio, Kevin Connors. for going, going for it. All right, can the Purdue defense stand here? Third and six golfers. Looking for Johnson, his best receiver, and he can't get it, but a flag comes in after the play. Well, that flag might get picked up. No, he grabbed him, Rod. I know, I'm just, the two officials who went to talk about it, Q, were in different positions. I thought I saw the defensive back grab the right shoulder and you can see the jersey. Yep. Yep. Q, that, that one out. Two officials saw two different things. That's why they had the conference and a good job of them coming together and talking it through. Left hand up high, grabbing the shoulder. Yep, absolutely. Good call, Q. The official had said 38, but clearly that was number 29, Simeon Smiley, the nickelback. Jeff Brown is hot, the head coach of Purdue on the field. So the penalty means first down and up to the 45. And with three minutes to go, Rodney Smith elusive before finally getting taken down. Rod, that's a pass interference call that's going to be called 10 times out of 10. Can you get no argument from me? When you use your hand up high around the shoulder pad, it's visible and you will get flagged. And when you pull jersey with it, it's an easier call. If you're down at the hips, there's less likely you're going to get the call, correct? That's exactly right. You have to keep your hands down low. But remember, you're talking about, you know, a guy who's not played in the slot an awful lot for them. He got matched up with the best receiver. It's a desperate situation. And he didn't want to give up the touchdown. That hand, if you're going to grab, if you're on the hip, you're okay. You're on that shoulder, you're going to get flat. A penalty at first down, able to force Purdue to use another timeout. They can only stop the clock once more. What a late game comeback for the Boilermakers. Need one more defensive stand. Smith flagged down. Gets out to the 47 yard line of Purdue. Appears to be against the Boilermakers, the early indication. Offside, defense number 23, lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty, still second down. Corey Trice, back yeah. up corner. Well, he's trying to get in press coverage up top here. You know, just look inside. Just look inside. Back up. Yep, no, need to, be. no yeah. need to be in that neutral zone. We spoke about this Minnesota offensive line in our open. They're gigantic, 1,700 pounds. One of the biggest in college football. Bigger than the Minnesota Vikings. Now is the time for them to assert themselves. Now is the time for them to physically dominate and seal the deal. Four-minute offense. Absolutely, Q. That's what they're charged with. Yeah, second and two. The Gophers less than three yards per rush. Rodney Smith going to get the first down. And now and the when clock they moves. needed that first down, where did they go? They went to the right side where they've got the big 400-pounder, Fa'alele, and also the big guard, Dunlap, who's 350. Jake Paulson, the tight end at 270 in there as well. A lot of beef on that right end. Going up against 260-pound defensive ends and linebackers. That's a lot of weight you're giving. Two huge conversions for Minnesota. Three on the play clock here as they take every precious second away from Purdue. And Smith 
continuing his fine afternoon back from injury down to the Purdue 41. And 30 second charge time off to Purdue. Their third and final timeout. Minnesota has gone extra heavy with their offensive line. Going to two tight ends. Paulson at 270. Keith at 255. So you got a lot of big guys on the right side of that line. And they started there and they cut it back, but they're pounding with the big guys again to finish this game, as Q mentioned. Rodney Smith up to 21 carries for 106 yards. As Minnesota tries to get to 4-0, they've been They've had their fill already of one possession games and amazing oh, comebacks. And this one is just trying to hang on. Well, if you're a Minnesota fan, you expected nothing different. You're getting used to the cardiac kids week in and week out taking you down to the wire. This is their fourth straight 3-0 start, trying to get it to 4-0. and One more first down. And it'll be ball game. Second and six. Barber pushing. Still pushing. And that should do it. Out across to the 32-yard line with a minute 37 to go. What a job by Minnesota up front. Just trying to bleed clock here after their aerial attack. It's just that right side of the line powering, punishing. Just pushing that smaller defensive line back enough to get the first down. Five guys, most of them well north of 300 pounds. And it's not till you're on field level where you get a good feel for just how giant these men are. As Tanner Morgan is going to take a knee, and Tanner Morgan is going to go to eight and two as a starting quarterback for P.J. Flex Golden Gophers. The guy when he took over in high school as a quarterback, his high school team was 1-11. That's right. Finished up with them being, what, 13-1? and 13-1. And, and as you said, was going to go to Western Michigan with Fleck. And then when P.J. took the job at Minnesota, sight unseen. Yep. Tanner Morgan went with him. Well, and P.J. Fleck absolutely believes in him, trusts him, and it's a mutual thing. Here's the final knee down. Minnesota got out to a three-touchdown lead, a valiant effort with some really big injuries today for Purdue. Handshake for Fleck and for Jeff Brom. And the Golden Gophers of Minnesota are going to 4-0 and to start the season. As they knock off Purdue 38 to 31. Drop the Boilermakers to one and three. Well, Minnesota has an awful lot of talent. You think about those receivers and the way Morgan played a quarterback, Smith at running back. Purdue is just sort of snake bit with all the injuries. Our final score, 38-31. Minnesota beats Purdue for Rod Gilmore, Quinn Kesnick. I'm Mark Kestisher. Send it back to the studio. Here's Kevin. Don't kid with COVID. Preparedness is key, but overbuying cleaning and health supplies puts others at risk. Please don't buy more than you need. What you do today will affect your family and our community tomorrow. Thank you.